But the Fresno Pizza and Pipes opened in the summer of 1977, and I was 12 years old at the time. And shortly after the grand opening, my family and I went there, and walking into that place, seeing and hearing the organ was absolutely a life-changing experience for me. I knew immediately that I wanted to be the guy sitting at that console making the music. And in the 70s, it was a different time. You know, every church, every church had an organ and an organist. Home organs, which I've talked about before on this show, were at the peak of their popularity. And Pizza and Pipes was actually just one of hundreds of pizza organ venues nationwide. So as a young man at that time, I had countless opportunities to get out and learn to play the organ, uh, with or without my parents' blessing. Now for me, uh, I had been studying classical piano from the time I was five years old, and so by the time I was 12, all of my basic music skills were there, so transferring that over to the organ was not as big a leap for me as perhaps somebody starting completely from scratch. So I had mentors all over the place. There were music stores that sold organs back then, and I met people there who helped me learn, gave me places to practice, and I had access to pizza and pipes, and some of the personnel there took me under their wing as well. As soon as I was learning to play the organ, I had the Pizza and Pipes Wurlitzer at my disposal. And within a year, I was actually a regular player there. Now, it was Saturday, Sunday afternoons, and I played strictly for tips and food because I was too young to be legally working in such a place. Um, and, but that was a good setup for a 13-year-old trying to learn how to play uh, such an instrument. This arrangement lasted for, I think, pretty much the summer of 78, uh, and then I had to move on to other opportunities. But by the time I was 16 years old, I was actually a professional organist playing at the Fresno Falcons uh, hockey games. Uh, I had a church gig, but it would be the mid-80s before I got a chance to actually be a professional organist at Pizza and Pipes. And at that time, well, the place was starting to kind of fade. I played there for probably maybe a year and then uh, ended up moving on. And then, of course, by the uh, mid-1990s, the Fresno Pizza and Pipes would be gone. So let's take a look here. Um, this is the Fresno Pizza and Pipes under construction. This view is actually from the back of the building and we're looking forward towards uh, Fresno Street. Uh, on the other side of Fresno Street was a place called Gemco, which is now the Shields Avenue Target. Here's another view from a similar angle, and I don't know which is first and which is second, but just different point in the construction. This is a pallet with all the relay equipment that was necessary for the organ to work. These are electro-pneumatic, electromechanical relays from the 1920s when the instrument was built. And the way it worked is, excuse me, you had a magnet that triggered a pneumatic actuator and the pneumatic actuator operated a multi-contact electromechanical switch. The, this was, there was a relay of some sort on every key and every stop and every piston and every control surface on the console. The reason for this is that every key on the organ can be connected to play dozens of pipes. And in order to do that, you would need a discrete circuit from the key to those uh, individual pipe valves. And that was just too much stuff to put in the console. So the console 
had an umbilical that extended out from it and went to these relays. And here they are being hoisted uh, into the building. They actually resided right above your head when you walked into the place. The relay room was directly above the entryway. And here it is. Uh, this is right overhead when you walked into the place. And uh, these are, you're looking at stop switches actually. So when you hit a stop key on the console, one of these would engage and route the keying voltage over to the correct pipes. A uh, little blurry, but again, this is not done with fancy iPhone cameras. <laughs> this is somebody's snapshot, maybe, you know, from a basic film camera. And that's what the entryway looked like. Very 70s, don't you think? And you could, of course, see the pipes in their pipe chambers through the windows at the front of the building. This is from inside the restaurant looking into the solo chamber, which is on the right-hand side. There were two big wind chests like this side by side and then other big pipes behind it. This is a view of the other chamber, the main chamber, which was on the left-hand side. And this is taken from one of the service ladders. We're looking down at the pipes. We're kind of on the street side of the building looking toward the restaurant. This is another view of the solo. And again, taken from one of the service ladders. And then here's the other solo chest. And uh, this particular service ladder took you up to the relay room. And of course, this is one of the few pictures I have of the interior. I have two shots like this. They're pretty much identical, but one was taken later on when some alterations had been made. This is what the place looked like the night it opened. Console shortly after the install. This is what it originally looked like. Um, there were modifications made, additional controls were added, and the console looked a little different after that. Now, one of the things that happened at all of the organ pizza venues was that prominent organists who were touring and playing on the theater organs that were still in their theater, kind of like the Warner's Theater here in Fresno, um, would show up once in a while at these pizza parlors and play a couple of sets. Um, this is probably one such uh, person. And, well, um, I don't really know who it is and where I got the picture from didn't really have much of an explanation either. Uh, maybe a little more research and we'll find out who this is. And this is a shot taken by somebody and I found it. This is actually Don Kroom. Uh, he was the lead organist when the restaurant opened. I met Don early on and he became one of my mentors. Uh, I took some lessons from him and he was responsible for making the pizza parlor organ available to me and allowing me to play on those Saturday and Sunday afternoons. Um, after a few years, he moved on to other things and other organists took over. Uh, but this is from, there was a horseshoe balcony in the building and you could go to the front edge of that horseshoe balcony and get a great view. And this is where I like to sit whenever I went there. I'd always go straight for the balcony and go to pretty much this position so I could watch Don or whoever was playing that night uh, do their thing. Now, oh, let's go back to this one. Um, you can see on the music rack there's a, a record album that Don recorded uh, at the Sacramento Pizza and Pipes, and of course, he also recorded on the Fresno Pizza and Pipes. And uh, naturally, I do have both of those records. There's the Sacramento, and uh, this is the Fresno, and uh, both of them are thoroughly worn out. And someday I'll have to dig up some new copies, maybe. So all of the pizza organ venues were really fiercely popular back in the 70s. 
But in the 80s, they started to die. And the question is, why? Well, the natural assumption has always been that, well, hey, things change, and people's cha tastes and interests change, and when they have other choices, they move on to other things. But you know what? I think that's not really why. You see, while we can't discount the impact that a changing culture has, I think that these kinds of answers are really too simplistic. They're kind of a catch-all, dismissive answer that really doesn't address the details as to why uh, popular cultural activity would suddenly start to fade out. And uh, I think we need to maybe dig a little deeper. Like I said earlier, there were hundreds of these places. Um, were there too many of them? Did they perhaps run into some kind of staffing problem? And if you think about it, the pizza organ venues were built around the novelty impact of the theater pipe organ. And novelty will definitely get people in the door, but it's not going to keep them coming back. So the organist had to be more than just a good organ player. They had to be a good entertainer. In fact, the pizza organ venues that had entertaining organists lasted. Case in point, the very first pizza organ restaurant was in Hayward, California and was called the Ye Old Pizza Joint. That place lasted until just a few years ago when unfortunately it burned down. And the biggest of all of the pizza organ restaurants, the Organ Stop Pizza in Mesa, Arizona, it's alive and well to this day. So I think the difference is the entertainment value that the audience got out of the experience of going to these places. And I think there's probably a whole host of reasons why these venues began to hit their demise. And those are reasons that I want to explore deeper. And it's sort of become my new big research project. I've got some theories brewing in my head, and I'm going to start trying to connect those pieces, those puzzle pieces. Uh, because here's the thing. In the 80s, not only did the pizza organ venues start to fade, but organists started to disappear. And this was when organs first started disappearing from churches. There has to be multiple reasons for all of this to be happening all at the same time. So that's going to be a subject for another show.